To create a pivot table, you need a data set that is structured in a fairly specific way. This video discusses the required structure. Actually, the purpose of pivot tables provides a clue to the way your data set should be set up. This purpose is almost always to break down numeric variables by one or more categorical variables. Therefore, it makes sense that your data set should be a collection of numeric and categorical variables arranged in adjacent columns. The data set you see here is typical, and it is used for illustration in many later videos in this series. The context is of customer purchases from the fictional YouSave online retail store. Each row corresponds to a customer purchase. It has information about the date and time of the purchase, characteristics of the customer, and numeric information about the purchase. There are 4,000 purchases, and I have split the screen so that you can see the last few rows. A word about terminology is in order. Each row in this type of data set is usually called a record, although you might also hear the term observation. This data set has 4,000 records. Similarly, each column is usually called a field, although you might also hear the term variable or attribute. This data set has 10 fields. Of these, five are clearly categorical because they contain text, and four are clearly numeric. The other field is a date field, and it is typically treated as a categorical field. The terms fields and records come from relational database terminology, but they, especially fields, have become part of pivot table terminology as well. This is the typical structure required for creating pivot tables, a rectangular range of data with no blank rows or columns, with records in rows and fields and columns, and with descriptive field labels in the top row. If your data set is not structured like this, and many data sets are not, then you need to manipulate it to get it into this form. Note that your data set can contain some blank cells, but you should fill them in if possible. Here is a structure you often see. The year and month fields have blanks, but it's clear what their values should be. Before creating a pivot table, these values should be filled in. There is a nice Excel trick you can use here. First, select the range of years and months, including the blanks. Next, press the F5 key to bring up the Go To dialog box. Click Special and select Blanks. This selects all the blank cells in the selected range with cell B3 as the active cell. Finally, create a copyable formula by typing equals and then pressing the up arrow. Then press Control Enter, both keys at once, to enter the formula into all blank cells. You can then check the formulas to understand what you've done. The blank cells in the total sales column are more problematic. They cause two potential problems for pivot tables. First, a pivot table treats the total sales field as categorical just because of the two blanks. This is not too important, but you should be aware of it. Second, if you summarize total sales in a pivot table by summing or averaging, it treats the blanks as zeros. If these two data values are really missing, you might not be able to fill them in in any meaningful way, but you should at least be aware of the consequences for pivot tables. I will finish this video with an example of a common but bad data structure, at least for pivot tables. You see this on the left, where monthly sales are listed in a table. This is a compact way to store the data, but it won't lead to useful pivot tables. The better design is shown on the right where each month region combination gets its own row. This design can then be used in a pivot table to break down sales by month or region. In summary, pivot tables can provide amazing results, but you need to ensure that your data set is structured properly, as described here, before pivot tables can provide meaningful results.